Welcome to the second crash course on sex chromosome abnormalities. This time around, we're going to be focusing on Klinefelter syndrome. Before we get into the specifics of Klinefelter syndrome, we're going to have a brief recap of the basics of chromosomes. For a more in-depth refresher, you can check out the first crash course on Turner syndrome, which is linked below. As a brief overview, in this video, we'll start with a recap of the basics about chromosomes, then discuss the basics of Klinefelter syndrome, including its prevalence and variations, then how it's diagnosed. We will then cover the symptoms and treatment for Klinefelter syndrome. We're going to wrap up by discussing where more research is needed. As a quick refresher, chromosomes are the instruction manuals inside each of our cells. They contain the genetic information that determines what individual cells, and us as whole people, become. The average person receives 23 chromosomes from their mom and 23 chromosomes from their dad, for a total of 46 chromosomes per cell. Two of these chromosomes are called the sex chromosomes, and as the name suggests, they determine the sex of an individual. Sex chromosomes can be either X or Y. Females typically have two X chromosomes, while males have one X and one Y chromosome. However, sometimes individuals end up with an abnormal number of chromosomes. One example of a chromosomal abnormality is Klinefelter syndrome. This syndrome is one of the most common sex chromosome disorders affecting around 1 in 650 newborn boys. That's around 0.15% of all males. Individuals with Klinefelter syndrome appear male, but rather than the standard 1Y and 1X chromosome, they have 1Y chromosome, but more than 1X chromosome. Most individuals with this syndrome have 1Y and 2X chromosomes, but some individuals have 3 or even 4X chromosomes. Individuals might also have a combination of some cells with a normal X and Y, and others with an abnormal number of sex chromosomes. This is called mosaicism. The syndrome occurs as a random error and is not an inherited condition. Risk factors for the conditions are not increased by the actions of the parents as it's a random event. However, there is a higher risk for older mothers. There are two main tests used to diagnose Klinefelter syndrome, hormonal testing and chromosome analysis. In hormonal testing, blood or urine samples are analyzed to reveal the presence of abnormal hormone levels, including testosterone. For chromosome analysis, also known as a karyotype analysis, a blood sample is sent to the lab to count the number of chromosomes and analyze their shapes. Most individuals with Klinefelter syndrome are actually never diagnosed with the condition. However, of the 25% who are diagnosed, a small percentage are diagnosed before birth, However, 90% are diagnosed after puberty, once the symptoms become more apparent. Now that we know the basics about Klinefelter syndrome, let's find out what symptoms individuals with Klinefelter syndrome have. Symptoms vary depending on how old the person is. As a baby, these individuals may have weak muscles and take longer to reach the typical motor milestones like sitting up or crawling. Going into childhood, these individuals continue to have slower development of their motor skills, coordination, muscle strength, and speed, and are typically taller than average. Additionally, around 75% of children with Klinefelter have learning disabilities as children, in particular delayed speech and language acquisition. However, most adults with the syndrome have no speech difficulties. Many of the symptoms of Klinefelter syndrome arise at puberty since individuals have lower levels of testosterone. These decreased levels disrupt normal development, including less body and facial hair, smaller testes, breast growth, and decreased muscle tone. In addition, the most significant symptom is infertility, which occurs in over 90% of individuals. Individuals with Klinefelter have increased risk for other conditions, including type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and osteoporosis. Like the symptoms, treatment also varies based on the age of the individual. Across an individual's life, there are a range of different healthcare professionals involved in treatment, including speech therapists, psychologists, general practitioners, pediatricians, and infertility specialists. In childhood, speech-language pathologists or speech therapists are frequently involved in care to address the language difficulties many children with Klinefelter syndrome face. Additionally, other rehabilitation specialists, such as occupational or physical therapists, often assist with motor delays or other developmental difficulties. Other specialists, such as counselors, therapists, or educators, can also play a role depending on the child's individual needs. Once an individual reaches puberty, the most significant treatment is testosterone replacement therapy to correct for the lower levels of testosterone. This helps ensure that individuals have proper sexual development, increased energy, improved mood, and helps individuals build relationships. When first beginning, there are check-ins with doctors every three months to find out what dose of testosterone works best for them, and after that, there are yearly check-ins. Testosterone replacement therapy is a lifelong treatment and also helps prevent some associated conditions like osteoporosis and diabetes. Testosterone can be given in a range of ways, including via a pill, a gel, a patch, and an injection. Depending on which method is used, Individuals receive the testosterone daily, such as with the pill or gel, or every two to four weeks or three to four months for injections. While there's a lot we know about Klinefelter, there's still much more to learn. One area for further research is testosterone replacement therapy. 
While there are known benefits associated with this treatment, there haven't been any large, randomized, placebo-controlled studies, which are the gold standard for scientific evidence. Some studies have shown benefits for starting treatment before puberty, so further research into when it is best to begin this treatment are still being conducted. Researchers also need to confirm the effects of testosterone replacement therapy on associated conditions like osteoporosis and provide insight into its impact on social and cognitive functions. It will also help reveal any potential negative or adverse effects of the treatment. Additionally, while most individuals with Klinefelter syndrome have reduced fertility, new technologies like testicular sperm extraction, or TESE, allow these individuals to have children. More evidence is being collected to determine what age sperm retrieval should be conducted at, since current evidence suggests that early retrieval is vital. Further research is also needed to determine if screening for Klinefelter syndrome should be introduced for all infants, since the appropriateness and cost of this level of screening is still undetermined. We hope you've learned something new about Klinefelter syndrome and other sex chromosome abnormalities. To keep on learning, check out other videos on the Demystifying Medicine channel.